guys, so I'm sitting on the floor. I know this is kind of weird angle, but that's because I want to read something really special off of my iPod and it has to be plugged in or it'll die in like five minutes. So we have to do this on the floor. So I thought it'd be really funny to read the fan fiction I wrote when I was like 10 or 11, maybe nine, probably like 10, I don't know. It was a long time ago. I wrote the Hunger Games fan fiction in my notes app. I didn't post anywhere. I guess I just wrote it for myself and I haven't read it since. I wrote it or like forever ago so I thought it'd be fun to like read it together because I don't know what to expect and I was literally in like fifth or sixth grade so it's got to be bad for some background I was really really obsessed with the Hunger Games and like Katniss and Peeta and all that like I this was my lock screen um Mr. Peter Mallark and I still am who am I kidding like I love the Hunger Games but like it was it was really bad. Whatever this is right now with Harry and Louie and One Direction, like, The Hunger Games was worse. I would dress up as Katniss, like, on the daily. Like, not just for Halloween, like, I just dress up as Katniss, so there's some background for that. This was my background, and I have Mockingjay games. I don't know what those consist of. My entire camera roll is, like, screenshots from Instagram of like the Hunger Games memes. Whatever all this is, I had countdowns to things in my camera roll that I was excited. Um, I guess we'll just get right into it. The fan fiction is the only thing in my notes on my iPod. This is so small. I wish I could show you my phone to scale. My phone is definitely like this big. This is so small. Okay, we've got the, we've got 13, no. 11 chapters and they're from different points of views. So this fan fiction is, I'm, I'm, I think it's like after Mockingjay because I see like their children's names. And one chapter is like one paragraph. So we, oh God. Okay, <clears throat> chapter one, Katniss's point of view. I'm running, I'm running very fast. I'm running so fast because someone is chasing me. Maybe not someone, but something. I turn to look and that something is a mutt. A mutt that looks very familiar. Just when they start to multiply, glance at their eyes. Wrong there. And I remember those eyes from my first games. Just as the mutts come closer and closer, I wake up. I wake up to a scream, but Peeta is there to comfort me. As he hugs me, I'm crying. I hear him whisper, it's not real. Calm down, I'm here, it's okay. As I calm down, I lay back down to close to Peeta as I drift back to a deep sleep. That didn't really make sense, but that's chapter one. Wow, this is intense. Oh, okay, chapter two is Peta's point of view. I wake up and Katniss is still sleeping. I don't want to wake her, so I carefully get up off the bed. I look in Willow's room and she is also asleep. When I go in Rye's room, he is asleep too. By the way, like their children being named Willow and Rye, I'm pretty sure that's like a fan thing because I can't find where Susan Collins has ever said that those are their children's names, but everyone used those names in fanfiction, from what I remember. I decided it would be nice if I went downstairs and start breakfast. So I go in the kitchen and turn the oven on until I hear footsteps, little footsteps, coming down the stairs. I turn around and I see little Willow standing in her PJs. Well, hello, Willow, I say. Hello, Daddy, she replies. What are you doing up this early, I ask. What are you doing up this early, says Willow. Well, I said, I just woke up and decided to start breakfast. Oh, Willow says. Now back to my question. What are you doing up this early? I say. Well, I heard pots and pans and noises down here and it woke me up, she said. Oh, well, I'm sorry I woke you, but now that you're awake, why don't you go play with your dolls? I say. No, thanks. Can I help you cook though, daddy? She says. Well, I would love some help, but there's really nothing left to do. I just have to take it out of the oven. What is he making for breakfast that he has to take out of the oven? Oh, well, that's okay. Maybe I can help with lunch, she asks. That would be wonderful. But what are you waiting for breakfast? Why don't go play with your dolls? I say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, says Willow. I continue cooking until I hear Willow scream. Oh no! Oh my God, what happened? Look at that. Can you see? Oh no! I don't know what's gonna happen, guys. I'm scared. Okay, chapter three, Peter's point of view. 
I run into the kitchen very fast to see what was wrong when I also see Katniss and Rye rushing down the stairs. They must have woken up from her screaming. When I got there, she is crying, and she held out her favorite toy doll to me, and there were scratch marks on the doll's face, or claw marks. The cat, I whispered to myself. Well, I'm glad you're okay, Willow, because you really scared me at first, said Katniss. I'm sorry, but is there any way to fix my doll, Mommy? says Willow, while still crying. Yes, I will fix it for you, honey, don't worry. Maybe we can ask Daddy to and see if he can help, says Katniss. Try not to leave your toys on the floor next time, too. Put them somewhere where the cat can't get to them, I say. Yes, that is a good idea, says Katniss. What an eventful chapter. Chapter 4. Willow's point of view. We're getting Willow's point of view now, guys. As everyone leaves the room, I look at my doll. The face all scratched up and paint all messed up. Wait, paint? That's why Mommy said Daddy could fix it. He is an amazing painter. I run into the kitchen and head over to my father. Um, Daddy, I say with my doll in my hand. Yes, pumpkin, says my dad. Well, you know how the kitty scratched my doll's face, I said? Yes, he responded. Well, I was wondering if you could fix her face. Well, you know, repaint it, I say. What is this? <laughs> what is this? Well, I don't see why not, but breakfast is almost ready, so how about after, he said. Oh, that's fine. Thank you so much, I say. You're welcome, he says. As I start to leave the kitchen, I hear my father say, wait. I turn around to hear what else he is telling me. Can you tell your mother and brother that breakfast is ready? He says, oh yeah, I respond. As I enter the living room and yell, mommy, rye, breakfast is ready. Okay, we're coming, I hear as I walk into the kitchen. I like to point out that there's like, the punctuation and capitalization is like, just awful. Like, there's no, like, if there's just like random words capitalized. I mean, I was like 10, so I don't really know what I was expecting. Chapter five, Willow's point of view. I sit down next to my mommy and my brother. My dad sets Rye's plate of pancakes in front of him. Yummy, yummy, says Rye as my dad smiles. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. He brings my plate and I say, thanks daddy. You're welcome, pumpkin, he says. He comes back over with two plates and gives one to mommy and gives her a kiss on the cheek and sits down with the other plate. We all start to eat and my mom mentions school. So Willow, are you excited for your first day of second grade tomorrow? Yeah, I guess so, I respond. Well, it does not sound like you're too excited about it, says my dad. Well, I guess I am. It's just that I had so much fun over the break hanging out with my family and playing with my toys that when I go back to school, that when it starts again, I won't have a lot of time to do this stuff. Okay. Oh, you will, I promise, says my mommy, as we all get up to put our dirty plates in the sink. As I remember about my doll, I go to the living room and go and get it. All right, chapter six. I walk to my father and hold out my doll so he can see it. Oh, I almost forgot. Hold on, let me go get my paint. As he walks upstairs, I go sit down at the table with my doll. I wait a little until he comes down the stairs with his paint. Yay, I say. Ha, I guess someone's excited, he says. I am excited because my dolly is going to be fixed, I say. Well, it might be a little while because the paint has to dry. So while you're waiting, why don't you go play with your brother in the living room, my dad says. Okay, just tell me when it's dried, I said. Why'd I just change tenses? Oh, we're getting Rye's point of view. I thought the kid was like a toddler, so I don't, I don't know what this is gonna be. I see my sister walk into the room. Hello, Willow, I say. Hi, Rye, what are you doing, she asks. I'm just playing with my trains, I respond. Oh, can I play, she asks. Sure, you can have the green train, I say. I give her the green train and I grab my blue train. So all you have to do is drive the train around. No, you have to say choo-choo, I say. Oh, I almost forgot, she says with a smile. Choo-choo, I say, and Willow says it too. You gotta say choo-choo, you can't forget. We back to Katniss now, Katniss's point of view. I'm so glad that I'm reading this. I, this is so entertaining. I walk into the living room and see Willow and Rye playing together and I smile. Then I walk into the kitchen and sit next to Peta. Hey, I say. Oh, hey, he says, waiting for Willow's doll to dry. How's it going, I say. Good, he says, and I give him a kiss. Willow, he yells. Yes, she says, running into the room. Your doll is ready, Peta says. Thank you so much, Daddy, she says while giving him a hug. I'm going to play with it right now, she says while running into the living room. Chapter nine, Katniss's point of view. As the day goes by, it becomes time to put the kids to bed and I knew that Willow is not going to like it. 
I'll put Willow to bed and you can get Rye, I say to Peta. Okay, he responds. We both go to the living room to get them. Wasn't it just breakfast? Okay, you two, it's time for bed, I say. No way, I'm not going to bed at the same time as my three-year-old brother, Willow scream. But you have to get up early for school tomorrow, Peta says. But I don't want to go to school, says Willow. Well, let's go to bed and we'll talk more about this in the morning, I say. Fine, she says as we walk upstairs. How is that a compromise? Let's go to bed and we'll talk about it in the morning? Chapter 10, we're almost done and nothing good has happened. Candace's point of view. I tuck her into bed as she fights to keep her eyes open. I will see you in the morning. I love you. Good night, baby, I say. Night, love you, mommy. And I walk downstairs to the living room and sit on the couch next to Peta. Did you get Rye to sleep, I ask? Yeah, he responds. I lay my head on his shoulder and I yawn. I'm getting tired. I think we should go to bed, I say. Yeah, it's probably going to be a rough morning with Will not wanting to go to school, says Peta. Yeah. And we walk upstairs and lay in bed, and I slowly drift off to sleep in Peta's arms. Okay, chapter 11, last chapter. I think I just, you know, gave up. Below's point of view. I wake up to my alarm clock and bury my head in my pillow as I refuse to get up. I don't want to go to school. I want to stay home with my family. I hear my door open and then footsteps. Willow, you have to get up now, I hear my father say. Fine, I say and sit up on my bed. My father kisses me on the cheek and says, you're going to have a good day, I promise. Okay, I respond as he walks out of the room. I look in my closet for an outfit and I find one and get dressed. I grab my brush and brush my hair. I grab two hair ties and bring them to my mom. Can you put my hair in two braids? I ask my mom, of course. And she starts to braid my hair. And that's it. Wow, that was so good. You know, I expected it to be worse, like grammar wise and like just in general. I thought it was going to be like really bad. I mean, it could have been a lot worse. I think, you know, the plot was being established. She didn't want to go to school. Maybe, maybe I was like, something's going to happen at school. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I want to know what was going to happen next. I'm really interested, but that's it. That's, that's all I wrote. I guess I thought that would be more entertaining than it was. It was kind of boring. So I'm sorry. At least you got to hear something that I wrote when I was 10. This is probably the first time you've ever read a Hunger Games fan fiction written by a 10 year old. So there's a first for everything. I'm glad it could be me. I guess that's it. This is by from Peta and I.